Um, we just have to wait until four. Jumped again a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm on the clock up there, and I'm like, whoa. Oh. Start recording. Okay, we'll call the Green Bay Sex Offender Residency to order. Uh, we'll take roll call. Let's get into that. Yeah. Okay. All right, I will document roll call. Looks like we have four members present. <clears throat> All right, I need uh, a motion to approve the agenda for the February 21st meeting. Move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Um, we need an approval of the minutes from the January 17th meeting. Move to approve. Second that. I'll second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. All right. <clears throat> First uh, regular business is the appeal of Edward Way. You can come on forward. All right, um, Edward, you've been here. This is your third time coming here, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, does anyone on the board need him to go over anything? I mean, the reason we, we just saw you in December and um, the motion was that you were approved for 60 days, but you had to bring proof of attendance at sex offender treatment and status update from your provider, which was received in our packets. Um, does the board need to hear anything further? I do not, not yet. Or do we just care to go ahead and carry through with the motion or is there discussion? Uh, looks like you've done what we asked you to do, provided the documentation, so I would let uh, Okay. I know the last few times um, I denied you, um, and that was because you had no treatment. Um, so I, you don't have a lot of treatment under your belt, but at least you're attending, and um, your uh, professional counselor indicates that you are, you know, attending and participating. So that's all that matters to me. All right. Alex, do you have any questions? I do not. No, I, I believe I moved to approve his location back in September, so I'm comfortable with this request. Okay. Does anyone want to make a motion? Alex, would you feel comfortable doing that? Uh, we, we both know him. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll make the motion to approve Mr. Way to move to address specific. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so you're approved. You don't have to come back unless you decide to um, move from the Luke Lane. Uh, hold on. Cornelius? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. 666 Cornelius. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thanks. All right, thank you. Approved. All right. Next on the uh, agenda is the appeal of Timothy Tennant. Uh, requesting to move to 425 5th Street Upper. Hello, we can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, you've never been before us, correct? Correct. Okay, so um, we're going to ask you uh, to tell us what you were convicted of. Um, when you talk about the offense, we don't want you to list um, or name the victim by relationship or name. Uh, and then <clears throat> we'd like to know how did the police get involved? Um, and then at one point, we'll want to talk about any treatment that you received. And you do have the option to do that in closed session, or we can remain in public session. Okay. Okay. Um, so, can I ask a question? Sure. Did my appeals and my papers for my treatment? Um, I have quite a few certificates that were sent. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. I don't have the money. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. We had quite a few certificates in here. Okay. So um all right, why don't you go ahead and uh tell us what you were convicted of? Um an SOT two sex offender. I was on Craigslist. Um personal encounters. Um I answered an ad on there. 
I was reaching out to someone to talk to because what I was going through with my wife, which I can't blame her because I had a take responsibility for my own action. Um, but I reached out to someone to talk to about a relationship and this gal, which was in deputy, but um, sexually talking, sexual talking that. Um, and then she told me she was 15 years old. Um, which I have a hard time reading and spelling and literate, so. Um, but I went through treatment center. Well, let's just, um. so <clears throat> she told you were a fit, she was 15. Yes. And then what happened? Um, we kept um, talking back and forth. Um, she told me that not to tell her mom and dad and she was told me like two or three times and um, where she worked. And um, she showed me a picture of her with a horse and a blind girl, uh, which I didn't think she was 15, but she stated she was 15. Um, but I continued to talk dirty. She wanted to meet by some school and I said, no, I don't go by schools. Um, just, Did you yeah. ever meet her? Uh, yeah, when they arrested me. <laughs> so you didn't meet her out and about on your own? No, it was the death of yourself. Okay. That was pain the 15 year old. It was a sting operation. Okay. Um uh, it looks like you had three uh charges. So you had use a computer to facilitate child sex, cause child 13 to 18 to view sexual activity. You had two oh, counts yeah. of that. What was that? Um I showed her my privacy. Um, but it was all done on my, what is it called, cell phone. Mm -hmm. It wasn't done on a computer. Okay, but that's electronics. Um, sure. I more or less, I talked to my phone because I don't know how to spell. So it read, uh, reads out what I say. Um, I don't know, I just know I was wrong for doing it. I'm not that way. Okay. My um, family knows that. Okay. If they were in Wisconsin, they would have a date here. But. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have um a lieutenant from the Green Bay Police Department. Uh, typically, they uh, confirm that what you just told us is accurate. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do that because it's from Shano. Yeah. Your your case occurred in Shawano. Lieutenant Allen, are you able to confirm any of that or were you not able to get the criminal complaint? No, I reviewed the criminal complaint. It had the entire chat history between the undercover and uh, um, the party in front of you and um, it is accurate what he said. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so... Um, Mr. Tennant, why would you continue to talk to her knowing that she was only 15? Well, because I wasn't allowed to talk to anybody. You weren't allowed to talk to anybody? No, because if you knew my wife um, and her family, um, I wasn't allowed to talk to my family. I wasn't allowed to talk to her family. If I did talk to her family, it was only for working they used me like a slave but um but i wasn't allowed to go nowhere unless she was with me or her family so okay all right um 
So your case was out of Shawano County. How come you chose to come to Green Bay? Um, because I trying to live with my friend Virginia Sour Bear and her roommate, um, James. I forgot his last name. Levi. Um, I've known Virginia. 30 plus years. So. Okay. Um, um, on your application, you said that you plan to live with your ex wife. That's correct. Is this the same wife that we're talking no. about? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. All right. Um, does anyone have questions regarding his offense? I don't know. You covered it real well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so now um, we'd like to maybe talk about any treatment that you've received. And again, remember you have the option to remain in public session or go into closed session. What would you like to do? Well, I can do it here. Okay, so we'll remain in open. Okay. okay. So it does look like you've received quite a bit of um, a variety of treatment. Um, looks like most of it was done while you were incarcerated. Yes. Okay, so... Um, it, in your packet, we have that you completed the cognitive behavioral program. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, positive U group. Yes. Uh, men's trauma recovery and empowerment model group. Yes. Substance use disorder. Yes. Adaptive sex offender treatment program. Yes. Okay. So um, let's first talk about what did you learn in the uh, sex offender class and how long were you in that class for? I was in that class for once a year. One year? Okay. And tell us what um, you learned from that. Oh, um, not to be talking to minors. Um, make sure they have they are... They say they're 15 and they say you want to um, see their ID or something and make sure that um, who they say they are. Um, stay far away from the children. Um, not to be talking dirty to them. Or, There's a whole lot, right? But okay. All right. Um, what was the um substance use disorder? Did you have a problem with drugs or alcohol prior to your arrest? Oh, no, actually, in my in my drinking days before I had my heart started, I had a drinking problem. How long ago was that? Over thirty years. Thirty. Okay. Yeah, well, I had heart surgery February 20, 2000, I think. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, men's Trauma Recovery and Empowerment Model Group. Um, what was that class about? Um, Watch who you talk to and how you act around kids. <laughs> um, I had to go to the Okay, no, that's okay. Because um, I have short term memory loss. So. Okay. Is that from an accident or? What, how can you have the Ever memory since loss? Since I had my heart surgery, I've lost a lot of memory. So, okay. I couldn't tell you one day from the next. So. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and do you remember what the uh, positive you group was? Everything's got to be positive, not negative. Yep. You still practice that? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. And if I 
get made and my friend Virginia or um James, they helped me um we sit down and talk about what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you also did the um cognitive behavioral program. Yes. Um tell us all of that class. Um How you um put yourself out in front of people and not talk sexually all the time and because I was raised that way because that's how my grandpa and dad talked all the time. So. Um but um I can't blame them because I got a lot from my action. Take responsible for my action. Okay. Um, when did you get out of prison? December 20th, 22, I think it was. So you've been out a little over a year? A year and two months. Okay. And, and where have you been staying all this time? I know it's your application says you're homeless, but... I was staying at um, Cork Lake and Chano. I was living in my van. Um, but I've been staying at Virginia's house for, I think, two weeks now. Um, because that's where my PO told me to go because of how cold it was. I I'm in my health problems. Um, I got COPD, heart problems, okay. lung cancer, so... All right. I speak that yeah. Okay. Um, and you, you're not working, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so tell us what you do um during your days. Um, I help out around the house, I play my guitar, I crochet. Um I pretty much stay in the house unless I go to a doctor's appointment or whatever. Okay. Do you drive? Yes. Do you have a car? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, are you in any kind of treatment at this moment? No. Okay. I took aftercare and all that. And they didn't tell me I had anything else to do. So. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Uh, does anyone have questions for him? That was very well. Okay. I'm here. Okay. So would you say that being around children would be a trigger for you? Um, I would say not, but I, I just stay away from them. So that way I don't get in trouble or go back to prison. Never been in, in prison day in my life. So until this all took place. Um. <clears throat> Does, does that help you, Alex? Yeah, kind of. I mean, what I'm trying to get at is, so he made the comment that he was instructed to stay away from children. And the reason why we have this code is to prevent those who may be triggered by being close to kids to not live close to kids. So it's kind of difficult to justify why he should be allowed to stay there if he shouldn't be near children, right? So that's what I'm trying to toy with they they told me that as long as i stay away from kids they had no problem with it if i had my like a chaperone or something <laughs> with me if there was kids present um other than that i just stay away from them, so. okay are you on a bracelet Yes, Are you going to continue to remain on that bracelet if you're approved to live here? As far as I know, they told me I'm a light person. Okay, so you will be on a bracelet for the rest of your life. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And then, so if you, like, had to go grocery shopping, then you have to have a chaperone? Yes. Okay. I go with Virginia. Okay. Um, all right. Does, does that kind of help you a little bit, Alex, knowing that he has the chaperone? Yeah, and a lifetime GPS. That's that's good. Okay. 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 
Um, I don't really have any other questions for you. Uh, did Virginia want to speak uh, on, on your behalf or? Yes. Okay, if you could just step up here and then um, state your name and address for the record, please. Virginia Sauerbeer. You might need to spell the last name. S-A-U-R, B as in boy, E-I-R. Could you spell that one more time? S-A-U-R, B as in boy, E-I-R. All right, thank you. Um, and the address. 425 Fifth Street. Okay, maybe. all right. Uh, what would you like to? I've known him for 30 years. I mean, I was shocked and what happened happened. But I mean, he stays away from like he said, kids and all that. We, the only time we go anywhere is to his doctor's appointments or to the grocery store. I mean, he's the type of person that always give him, give you his shirt off his back. Um, but I, I always make sure I'm with him when he needs to go someplace. He's not alone and nobody can say he did this or that. Or, Okay. Um, do you have um, any kids or grandkids that come to the house? No. Okay. And I don't allow kids at the house either. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't have any questions for you. Anybody else? No? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I'll, I'll just kind of say where I am usually. Um, I typically don't approve people who are from another county uh, just because I feel that it's hard enough for our own residents of Brown County to find housing. Um, but I, I understand you've got some medical issues um, and I really wouldn't have a problem with you staying with Virginia, but that's just my opinion. You know, with the rest of the board, we can discuss it and, you know, we have to just wait for someone to make a motion. I agree with you, Heidi. Just kind of the bracelet to a chaperone anywhere he has to go. So, okay, I agree. Okay, Alex, Dominique, anything? <clears throat> I'm having the GPS and the chaperone that makes me a little more comfortable. Okay, perfect. Would anyone like to make a motion? Who to approve address specific? Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Was that opposed? Sounded like an aye. Yeah. Alex and Dominique, would you just clarify your votes? Oh, aye. Sorry, my internet acted crazy. Okay, second. okay so uh, Mr. Tennant, you're approved to reside at 425 Fifth Street. Um, I believe that's the upper. Is it the upper? Yes. Um, if you do decide to move from that location, you do have to come back before us. All right. Okay. Um, do you need the, you want the letter mailed to the 425 address? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you need my information officer? No, no, we don't need nothing. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right. Well, yep. <clears throat> All right, the next appeal is of John Barry requesting to move to 1730 Badger Street, apartment eight. Yes. Come on up. All right, and uh, Mr. Barry, you've never been here before, correct? No. Okay, so um, you may have heard, we're gonna ask you to go ahead and tell us what you were convicted of. Uh, please don't state the name of the victim um, by name or relationship. Um, let us know how the police uh, became involved. And then, um, again, we'll ask you about any kind of treatment you may have received. You have the option to do that in closed session or uh, remain in public session. Okay. Okay. So if you want to start off with uh, your offense. My first offense was in 98, I think. Uh, I was along with her and I ended up touching her inappropriately. And uh, she said something at school. Um, I was convicted of criminal sexual conduct in the fourth degree for an inappropriate touching. And where did you touch her? On her vaginal area. Just one time? Yes, this is only one incident. Okay. And you did one year in the county jail for that? 
Yes. Okay. All right. And then your next offense? My next offense was in 2011. I got convicted of two counts of child pornography for downloading uh, inappropriate porn. Um, and I believe that was internet trace. I, I don't really know. I think that's how they did it with the IP address or something. Okay. Um, and how long had you been doing that? Um, maybe about a year and a half, I think. I was downloading movies and everything I could really when I met this dude and he taught me how to do it. Before then, I never even owned a computer. I never was really interested until I found out I can download things and uh, kind of got into it from there. Okay. So it was movies. Um, so it, the, the, what you were convicted of was possession of child pornography. How yes. did you get to start looking at child pornography? Um, it all started, I guess, with LimeWire. I started downloading uh, everything I could find. Like I said, all kinds of porn and everything. And, and it, that included child porn. And me and my girl talked about it. And we just started downloading everything we could. Um, every Everything, basically, we sexually related, we got into. Uh, so we just started downloading everything, like I said. So... Okay. And then how did the police uh, get involved? Like I said, I think it was an IP address trace. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Did they just show up at your house one day? Yeah, with a warrant. And then they, they, searched, they seized all my computer equipment and storage devices and all that, my cameras and everything. I uh, I didn't know they were coming. They didn't ask. They didn't, you know, they just showed up with a warrant. And I I assume that's how they did it was with the IP address. Okay. Um, all right. We're just going to confirm your story with Lieutenant Allen with the Green Bay Police Department. Okay. I have reviewed that criminal complaint uh, and it, everything that he's indicating is true and correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, then once the police got involved, um, did you admit to everything? Did you go to trial? Uh, well, we admitted to everything, but we wouldn't sign documents at the time, and then they let us go. And then there was uh, an investigation, and we were out for a long time. I believe there was warrants, but I never got picked up for nothing until um, the drug task force got involved. Uh, cause I was running a drug house. Um, so once they got involved, then they found out about these past warrants for the, the child home. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I, I guess I'm just a little bit curious because it looks like you got 10 years initial confinement and 10 years extended supervision. Yeah, it was, um, the, each count was five and then five. So, and they ran it, um, I'm sorry, is it concurrent? No, is consecutive. Consecutive, I'm sorry. Uh, so then I did 10 in, 10 out. Okay. And that doesn't include any of your drug charges? They ran that concurrent, is that? Okay. Right? Yep, all right. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm nope, a little confused. Nope. About that sounds, oh, that's okay. All right. Um. Uh, does anyone have any questions about his crimes? No. Okay. No. All right. Um, so then we um, want to talk about maybe any treatment. Do you, Again, you have the option to remain in public session or go into closed session. What's your preference? Open is fine. Okay. All right. So it does look that um, you completed um, sex offender treatment while you were in prison. Yes, SO4. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us what you learned from that class? Well, I learned about a lot about like internalizing my anger and impulsivity. I have big problems with that, just acting out when the moment strikes. And then I learned about ways of changing my thinking and how to deal with internal trauma that I was going through, how I displayed that negatively towards others and there was a lot of thinking, 
lot of changing my ways of thinking about the situations in that these were real victims. It wasn't just like downloading a movie, you know, it was, there were actual people that were victimized as I was. So it really brought a lot out in me and how to rethink my situations and. Okay. Um, and then uh, once you got released, you went and did aftercare at Hangar Enterprises? Yes. Okay. With Pablo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. And then um, did you learn anything more from there? What did that entail? Well, that was basically the same thing, really. Okay. Except it, the way he makes you talk, it made you change some thinking, too, uh, because you would say certain things and they would be like the wrong terminology. And so he kind of took a step beyond with just thinking uh and learning how to act around people and how to meet people and not treat them in a negative way it was it was really a little bit different than the actual so far okay um and then while you were in prison you did um the sud substance abuse yeah it, it was um it was called uh, CGIP because it's like substance abuse and thinking for a change and all that yeah. grouped into one okay. thing. Um, and that was because, I mean, you did say earlier that you were a keeper of a drug house. Did you have issues? I mean, I, from what I read, you had a lot of issues with some drugs. Yeah. Um, ever since I was a teen, like a mm -hmm. young teen, uh, I was on medication. I was in treatment centers and everything. And the meds didn't really seem to help, but it helped me to uh, self-medicate, I guess is what they call it. And I really felt better with that than the drugs they were giving me. And I guess, it, you know, it's, it is a negative thing to do, but it made me feel better. It made me change uh, who I am, you know, and uh, it really spun out of control. I was using everything under the sun, uh, all kinds of opiates, weed, mushrooms, ecstasy, I, anything I can get my hands on, I was pretty much addicted to. And the only way to really afford that at that time was to run a drug operation. So that's what I did. Okay. Where are you at with that now? I'm sorry. What? Where, where are you at with substance use now? I'm clean. I had stayed clean the whole time I was in prison. I got out. I'm clean still. Uh, it's one of the hardest things I ever had to do to be clean like that. Uh, it's been a long history of drug abuse, so I'm really giving it a try. I really want a new start in life and stay away from them things. I don't hang out with people. If if I find out that you're on drugs, I don't want to talk to you. I, it's really hard to make friends because I open myself up to people and I try to talk to them and it seems like they're on something and then it's just a bad situation. So I kind of stick to myself where I don't open myself to no opportunities. Um, you also put on your application um, that you did the Vivitrol program. Are you still doing that? No, that was just a one year program okay. because um, when you first get out, they realize how hard it is to like, Drugs are everywhere, and it's yeah. easy to get. And when you're on the Vivitrol, you can't do no drugs whatsoever. So knowing that and that transition into that period for the first year, uh, it really helped to stay away from drugs and just get accumulated to the outside world and stay away from things like that. Okay. How long have you been out of prison? Almost three years. And, and you haven't been staying at the Lombardi Ave the whole time, have you? Um, I was in the TLP for okay. the first few months. And then, yes, I've been staying at the, the Arena Motel for two and a half years, maybe a little more. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and I see that uh, you you are working somewhere. Yes, I yep. work at Psalm Partners. Okay. And how long have you been there? Uh, almost since I got out. It, I started working less than two weeks. Okay. And I started working, and I've been there since. 
All right. And what kind of hours do you work there? Uh, my normal hours are what's called a two, two, three. Yep. Okay. Um, I work from six to six. A to P or P to A? A to P. Okay. Um, but I, I work overtime all the time. I do all the hours I can get. Um, if they need me to fill in, I'm there. Okay. I'm always available to work, so it keeps me out of trouble and on the right track. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Are you still uh, in circles of support? No. Um, I was going for a while, and then um, they opened up a new line at work. And now, since I pulled in more hours, I'm unable to make the meetings. Okay. Um, in your packet, there was uh, this uh, behavioral health form that was completed by a Todd Hamilton back in April of 2021. Do you remember that? If I showed it. Does this look familiar? Is that for a sex of treatment? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so there are a couple of things that were um, a little bit concerning that I, I had. Um, and so uh, you described yourself as having an overactive sex drive. You were unsure how to manage it. And you described yourself as masturbating multiple times a day. Yes. Does that still occur? No. Do you still have, feel just, that way? No, it was at the time. Like I said, I was all involved in porn and it was everywhere. So okay. I. Okay. Um, it did say that, um, you know, you did have some empathy towards this crime. So that was, um, you know, good to know. Um, the thing that I think, and you said it earlier uh, today, is you can be impulsive. Yeah. How are you going to tame that impulsivity? I know that's a hard word. Uh, I've been working on that issues and uh, I've had multiple programs and I still work with my PO on um, like behavioral change and thinking for a change. And I have all these programs that work. So every other week when I go see her, I work on that exercise with her. And I'm still doing it to this day. So I'm, it's a continuing progress. Um, I think that I learned a lot from group and I don't act so impulsively. I think now that I get older, um, I think it tamed down a little bit. And now that I'm not on drugs all the time, I think that also uh, inhibited yeah. For me, from doing that, I'm sorry, that's another hard word. Okay. Um, I'm okay. sober, so I'm learning to live with myself. And okay, good. Um, and then let's see what else. Uh, so it kind of in the conclusion of um the report from uh, DOC, uh. You know, it did say that you developed a well thought out plan that it appears to include enough detail to adequately reduce your risk um, and you receive feedback from your peers. Um, you're encouraged to continuing play, continue paying close attention to his lap signs as those will pose a great risk to him. So let's talk about that. What are those lap signs? Well, I say to myself, I don't go anywhere where children are present uh, without a chaperone. Uh, I have my mom as a chaperone, so we come down and she does things randomly that I don't normally do. Um, basically, I just work. Okay, but uh, so you work a two, two, three schedule. So you have lots of days off in there. So what do you do during those days off? Um, well, I, I do a lot of gaming. Uh, I like to read. I like movies. Uh, okay. TV series is I watch a lot of TV. Um, I like music, so I sit around and I listen to music a lot and while I read. Okay, are you allowed to um possess uh a computer? Uh, no, not I'm I'm on the internet with my cell phone. I got a smartphone. I I got approved for that. Um, after over three years. 
Okay. Uh, I've been doing good. I haven't been causing any problems, so they let me have a smartphone, and it has that. Um, it's like a defensive program, so it tells you what you look up. Okay. I forget the name. No, I probably like a anti spyware of some sort or anti yeah something. Yeah. Yeah. A monitoring okay. software. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Your PO has access to that? Yeah. It's it's all monitored through them and my PO. I've heard of it before. Okay. All right. Well, I think I've talked enough and have enough um questions. Uh anybody else? Do you have any strategies for staying clean and sober? Do you have groups? Do you I still like I said, I stick to myself. Work is my main thing. I I pull in all the hours I can. I know it's two, two, three, so I have some time off, but I'm always pulling in extra days. Uh, sometimes I work six days a week. So on my last day, I just, I want to do my laundry, do my stopping, and then just go home and just relax before I got to do more time. Uh, work is my main focus. It really helps me, like, fill my activity time and... Okay. All right, so um, we'll have some discussion and um, you know, then maybe we'll entertain a, somebody will make a motion. Um, I will tell you when I read your paperwork, um, I was pretty hesitant about allowing you to live at this address. Um, but listening to you, um, you've kind of changed my mind. I think you, uh, you understand what you did was wrong and you've taken those steps to fix what you need to do. Um, so I, at this point, feel a lot more comfortable than I did before I met you. That's how I feel. <clears throat> Anybody else? I feel like he's done everything he's been asked to do as far as treatment-wise. Uh, he's remained apparently clean and sober to this point. Um, I would encourage you to think about going to a meeting or two when you have time. It wouldn't kill you. It wouldn't hurt you. So, but I, I'm, I'm I have one question. Under supporting people, you have a co-worker listed, Sally? Yeah, Sally's my uh, team lead. She's basically the only person I talk to really outside of work. Uh, after work, we'll go grab dinner sometime or nothing. We're not dating. We're not, you know, anything. We're just, we could talk and we're go out to dinner sometimes. Beyond that, we never really hung out. She asked me a couple of times to go to a couple of places, but it's like adult places and I don't go to bars because I don't uh, I don't want to be around that situation, even though my PO said with approval I can go, but I don't want to put myself in that situation because I had drinking problems in the past. So I kind of declined politely uh, and just I have some other stuff to do and then I don't want to be around that situation. So... Does she know about your your past history then, or? Uh, she well, she doesn't know the details, but she knows about me. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, Dominique, do you have anything? Um, I think I'm with you. It looked a lot worse on paper than it did, but hearing him and hearing him talk about all the treatment, and everything. more comfortable okay all right would anyone care to make a motion move to approve address specific is there a second i'll second it all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. okay so you are approved uh to move to uh sorry uh 1730 badger street apartment eight if you do decide to move from that location you do have to come back before us Okay. Thank you, guys. This is a big opportunity and yep. second chance. Yep. Good luck. Good luck. You want us to mail that to the Badger Street? Oh, uh, yeah. Mail like a letter. That would be great. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you. Lots of thank you. Yep. <laughs> All right. Is there any other information that we need to discuss? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, the next meeting is uh, March 20th, 4 o'clock. If we just get a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. 
All in favor? Oh, sorry, I need a second. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Aye. Thank you.